Joined now by NHL insider Frank Saravelli of the Frankly Speaking podcast and Daily Faceoff. And we have to hand it to him again here, Blake. He mm. called at the outset of the season the Vancouver Canucks to the playoffs. And this is our first hit with him since the Vancouver Canucks have qualified for the Stanley Cup playoffs. Here's the hoop you can dunk right take, here. Uh, right there. Take another bow, Frank. Boy, he's taking a lot of bows this year. I can't know. Do you know? <laughs> Look. I, I was a believer that this team could be a lot better. I am not going to sit here and take credit that I thought this team would be winning the Pacific Division. I'm sorry. Like, I'm not. I, I Let's be real. Mm-hmm. That's true. I don't think anybody had that one on the bingo card. Literally nobody. And and it does look like they're going to win the Pacific Division after uh, right. the Oilers put a charge into them. So I saw the them up- around 95 to 97 points. They're at, what, 102 right three? now? Right? Two, yeah, yeah. I mean, sorry, I did not have that on my bingo card. So, uh, so from the outside looking in, what what do you think constructed this, Frank? Why do you think it got to this level? Oh, I think there's a lot of reasons why. I think the biggest thing starts with Rick Tockett and the structure. And I think it, I just made this point on another show this morning at what if I think a mistake it is for the Ottawa Senators to not have made a, a permanent coaching hire. You know, if you want to get rid of DJ Smith and you want to – um, you know, have Jacques Martin come in and try and instill some fundamentals as a temporary steward of your franchise. Fine. But the Vancouver Canucks are sitting here right in front of your eyes as proof to why getting the next real guy installed with however many games are remaining in the season matters because not one single player that it was a carryover from last year to this year arrived at camp not knowing what to expect, needing a period of adjustment and hand-holding. They were able to hit the ground running, and then you can talk about the additions and improvements that were made by an incredibly aggressive management team. Both those things go hand-in-hand. You know, it's one thing to add, but if you didn't have the proper structure in place, I don't know that it matters. And there's been a march about this team that's been methodical from really start to finish. And the messaging has been consistent and it's been fair and it's been transparent. All those things add up to something really significant. Uh, on the sends, they might just not have the guy that they want available yet. But that's they, BS. Yeah. No? You think well, so? Okay, so tell me how much better the coaching pool is going to get between now and June. They might just be hopeful. <laughs> I mean, Hopeful I for what? Unless I don't you, know. Unless you have intel that I don't, which I always, that's entirely possible. Steve Steos has tons of connections around the league, but there's a ton of great candidates available. You know, you've got Jay Woodcroft, Craig Berube, Todd McClellan. I'm just rattling these off off the top of my head. Lindy Ruff. All these guys have been canned in the last year. You mean to tell me not one of these guys suits your fancy? Speaking of coaches, is Quenville getting back in next year? I don't have any intel on that. They've been stuck in purgatory, both Joel Quenville and Stan Bowman, and it would be nice, I think, not for me, but nice for them. I think they're owed some clarity on a sentence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, On the Vancouver Canucks, we're getting down to uh, the nitty-gritty here, the final impressions for awards. Is Tockett going to win the Jack Adams? Like, I think he's a slam dunk because I just don't see another coach who has presided over this kind of a turnaround like Tockett has. But you tell me, Tockett going to win the Adams? If Rick Tockett doesn't win the Jack Adams, they should just not hand out the award anymore. <laughs> Agreed. Quinn Hughes on the North. Just, just, who's, who's second, if, if, even if it's a country mile behind Rick Tockett? Who's I don't second? know if it's a country mile, but... I mean, John Tortorella is in the mix, and I I don't know that enough love has been given to Peter Laviolette. They've had a, mm-hmm. you know, maybe not in points wise, but I think the way that they play has been significant, a change. And and I don't think enough people have talked about Chris Knobloch. I really don't. Mm-hmm. Um, everyone has said, oh, well, you've got Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl. Of course that team was going to turn it around, but the fact is they were in 32nd place and 
they're they're the only team sort of nipping at the heels of the Canucks for a division championship. Who would have thought that in early November? I'd say maybe they could make the playoffs, probably a good chance, but I, I didn't think that they'd be in the mix and this comfortable at this point in time. Did we have mm. Dallas Stars winning the President's Trophy? Like well, that's, that's... No, no, but as I talked about yesterday in my editorial, every team that's uh, at 100 points or around 100 points are really good teams from With last good year. Yeah. 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 Um, Winnipeg Jets took a step forward. So, you know, bonus maybe deserves some love and some shout. I know he didn't coach every game this year. Uh, yeah, I have a hard have time a... with that one. Like, how do you... Mm -hmm. No, and I know it's not against him, but like he wasn't no, even exactly. there for a quarter of the season. How no do you, could you possibly do that? Right. No fault of his own, but it probably means that he's not going to win the Jack out. Florida are the last... jets pretenders anyway. Like I don't, not that that matters. Cause it's mostly it's, it's a regular season award, but mm. I, I mean, look at the road they're facing. I, I don't, is there a tougher one in hockey in this bracket? Oh. You, you might be able to beat the abs in round one, but here's your, you know, you yeah, get the no, stars I know. in round two. Like, good luck. Yeah, to win series where you're giving up home ice to Colorado and Dallas would be quite a trick. I, I mean, I guess there's an outside shot still they could catch Colorado. Uh, Florida didn't have the best regular season last year, but then they made a run to the Stanley Cup final as the Eastern Conference champions. So, yeah, all the teams at the top of the pecking order in the National Hockey League this year had bona fides going into this year. The Vancouver Canucks are the one exception there. Can uh, we ne can we never do that again with the with the Panthers? Like. I'm not saying you, but the next person that says to me, oh, the Florida Panthers, you know, as you know, being so far down in the standings, look at the miracle run that they made. Like my head explodes every time they had 122 points and won the president's trophy the year before. Right? Yeah. I know mm -hmm. what you're saying is factual, but yes, it's, it's not really, that's not what the true narrative is. It, that's no. a good team that underperformed. Yeah. Well, I, Canucks, and, Canucks in 94, same idea. Well, they no. were a juggernaut the year before. They just underperformed in the year that they went to the Cup. And it's a fair point. A lot of the teams at the top of the NHL packing order this year not only have last year bona fides, they have two years ago bona fides mm -hmm. uh, as well. But I heard people saying heading into the season, oh, why can't the Calgary Flames be the Panthers of last year? And I'm going, because the Calgary Flames were never really good. Is that rude? Nope. Especially not here. Okay. <laughs> Your Q rating just went up yeah, in exactly. Vancouver, Edmonton. Is that rude? Are you um, kidding me? You're pandering at this point. Quinn Hughes and the Norris, and there's uh, selections already coming out, some picking Kale McCarr. Roman uh, Yossi is making quite a bid here as the Nashville Predators have had an incredible second half. What's your feeling on Quinn Hughes? Is he going to win the Norris? With all due respect to Roman Yossi, I think this is a two horse race and I realize how well Yossi has played to help the Preds solidify their spot in the postseason and the winning streak that they were on. It was truly impressive. And he's obviously a great defenseman who is having a good year, but where was he the first chunk of the season? Kale McCarr and Quinn Hughes have never had the dip. So mm -hmm. unless you're telling me that since then Roman Yossi has been 20% better than those two guys, I'm sorry, he's he's not in he's not factoring into the one or two spot on my Norris ballot. <laughs> How much is well, there's three finalists, so I threw his name in there, but sure, no, the, I, I'm just to saying the question is Quinn gonna win it? Space. Uh the question is um I'm really torn. Uh, that's my true answer. I don't know what I'm doing yet with my Norris. Um I don't know how to I, I hope I can properly analyze the defensive zone impact of both of them because the points are going to be somewhat close. It's going to be probably a negligible difference. Um, the minutes, the responsibilities, the overall impact on how, you know, they challenge or I guess prop up the rest of their team is important. They're really close in so many categories. I think what it's going to come down to for me, if I can possibly make a decision, is how to analyze their defensive zone play. Do Who's the better they, defender? Because they're both, I think they're equally talented offensively. Do you think that so people forget and team standing aren't, aren't like whoever well, leads? They're going to be mostly the same, are they not? Fair enough. Yeah. I mean, and who'd have thought that? Because Cam McCarr's always scored goals. Quinn Hughes only this year has started scoring goals. Um, and they're separated by three, for heaven's sakes. Um, 
I mean, the old the old adage, best offense, best defense is a good offense. Isn't that hold true for both of these guys? And that that's again why to me they they are a little bit above Yossi and and others is that these guys just have the puck on their stick and and you're not scoring when the puck's on their stick. Yeah, and I think they have their own like unique, amazing abilities. Um, when I think about their games in a vacuum, or at least try to envision them, I think Quinn Hughes is arguably the best passer in the entire NHL. He certainly, you know, math wise, I think I have to double check it. Last time I looked, makes the most successful passes in the NHL. Mm -hmm. When I think of Kale McCarr, I think of someone that has this almost like uh, like artful uh, figure skating ability to like move out of the way of players and then use that skating to get the puck up the ice. So they're kind of, you know, their 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 impact and eventuality is the same. They both move it, um but they do it in slightly different ways. Which one means more? I don't I, I honestly think with both these players we're we're splitting the thinnest of hairs. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a huge um feather in the cap of quinn hughes because oh for sure everyone he had knows catch. that he's mm -hmm. yeah he's he's made up the ground whereas kale mccarr has been at this level for two full seasons now this is the third at least um quinn hughes has elevated to that level does that mean you get to you know take the mantle i don't know yet I thought he'd be a nine goal, 70 assist guy, you know, at, at his top end. I didn't see the flirting with 20 goals in Quinn Hughes's arsenal. So the fact that he's added that is, uh, is, is pretty astounding, really. Um, one narrative to push back on is I hate the idea too that so this is for any award, so and so deserves it. Oh, this guy's won it for a few years. Let's give it mm. to someone new. That's, that's complete and utter bullshit. And the fact that someone would say that out loud as a voter is disappointing to me. Yeah. Voter fatigue is a real thing, but you're right. It shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. If the guy earns it, he earns it. Um, uh, where was anyone saying this when Nick Lidstrom was winning the Norris trophy? Yeah. Like, there, there's no reason to take away from Kale McCarr to prop up Quinn Hughes. Mm -hmm. or and I'm not, I'm not shading. I'm not giving you some insight into how I'm thinking about it. I'm just saying, these two are going to be so incredibly close. It's going to, uh, my guess is it's going to be one of the closest Norris trophy votes in terms of points that we've ever seen. Do you think the Canucks regret not adding another piece, especially a winger at the deadline? I don't um, because ask me in four weeks, but what if the Canucks lose in round one? Mm -hmm. You have to allow for that possibility. Like, look at all. We've talked all year long about the meat grinder that is the West. Of those top six teams, two of them are guaranteed to lose in the first round. So two of Winnipeg, Colorado, Dallas, Edmonton, Vegas, and Van are are going home guaranteed. Yeah. I, I guess the flip side would be, you know, did you give yourself the best shot to win in round one by not going and adding? How, but how much more piece? adding – would that have changed that dynamic? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I'm just saying, I think me, everybody looks at the team now and says they're a winger short. So, uh, so you I don't no know what the Canucks would feel, but I think me personally, my opinion is that adding more would have been a mistake because my goal and mindset, if I were managing a team would be, how can I extend the longest possible window to give my team as many kicks at the can as possible, as opposed to loading up for three. Mm -hmm. Phil Kessel was free. Any Phil Kessel regret? Not for me. Um, oh. I'm sure there's a lot of regret on Phil Kessel's end that he spent that chunk of time in the lower in, mainland. In Abbotsford, yes. Yeah. Not even really. Not even the yeah. lower Not mainland. Even, yeah, that's yeah. even worse. No <laughs> offense to anyone in Abbotsford. Um, I just... There Frank was never be, a uh, guarantee, but I don't. I never thought that at this point in Phil Kessel's career, after the defending champs said that they were better off for 20 games in the playoffs last year, not using you, that he would have been someone that would have been helpful or hugely beneficial. Yeah, I mean, his, his stat line from last year and the fact that he wasn't using the playoffs should be warning mm -hmm. enough that it wasn't going to be a panacea. It right? was, and, and yeah. I'll, I'll tell you this, like, 
I do my free agent rankings every year and I'm going to do one, the first one of this year in the next couple of weeks, I got a few angry messages saying like, how's Phil Kessel not on your list? And I'm like, he was a healthy scratch for 20 games. Like, what do you want? Mm -hmm. Like, it's not me. I'm just telling you what I think the rest of the market is going to see. And that's, that's what ended up playing out. Mm -hmm. Good time to note. Frank will be here in Vancouver covering the Canucks in the <laughs> lower mainland for the first round <laughs> series. He'll be anxious to see. And I, I think we're going to do a couple events with our friends at Greta. Mm -hmm. So um, any S and P listeners yep. want to come hang out, uh, yeah, for sure. we'll, yep. we'll line it up and I'll share some details. Yep. And on the uh, 20th, we'll be at the Hollywood theater for the road to playoffs event as well. Hoping you can make that Frank. We'll mm -hmm. see if uh, the travel. Situation. Well, it depends on the schedule. You asked me and then I was looking at what else is on my list. And my wife said, <laughs> Wait a second, you're missing the father daughter dance on Friday night? Oh no. That that could be slightly problematic. So we'll see yeah. what happens. Okay. Soon. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, hey, got to win at home before you mm -hmm. come on out on the road. Uh the Arizona Coyotes um have a new arena gambit. Tell us about it. Well, I don't know that there's anything new because we've known for a long time that they intend to try and win a state land auction. So really what we got were additional renderings that also aren't really all that different than the ones that they had sent out for the Tempe uh, bid that they made. And there's a lot of like, you know, intentions. We've all got intentions. Mm -hmm. The Coyotes intend to win state land. They intended to win a referendum in Tempe. And I intend at some point to lose 75 pounds. Look, all these things, um, we work towards them, but that doesn't mean that because you send out a release that it's going to be successful. So what we learned is that the state land auction is June 27th. And I've seen all the tweets from the Coyotes fans who are saying, hey, Frank, you have no credibility. Stop reporting on our team. I, I, I'm just telling you what, what's happening behind the scenes. I There's a much greater than 0% chance that the Coyotes don't even have a franchise that makes it in Arizona to June 27th when this auction date is. So and what happens there? What happens here's there? Here's why I believe this is because yeah. the NHL has had many opportunities, including just a couple weeks ago at the GM meeting, to put a stake in the ground and say, we are seeing this through. We are committing that the Coyotes are playing in Arizona at Mullet Arena next season, come hell or high water, whatever happens with this land auction. They've yet to do that. And when asked at the all-star break about the intention to win this state auction, Gary Bettman's answer was very lukewarm for someone who knows exactly what he's saying at all points in time about Alex Maruello. And he basically said, it, I have faith in owners until proven otherwise. I don't know that the NHL has faith that Alex Maruello will win this auction but I don't even know that it's necessarily about winning the auction. There's a long way between winning a state land auction and getting shovels and steel in the ground. And what that's be the, really all that matters. What would be the mechanics though? Like to, 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 to not get to June 27th. What, what, what's, what does that look like? Well, we saw this PR release, which came like oddly enough at like almost 11 Eastern on a Thursday night, um, which I guess coincided with the state land auction a date announcement, but Arizona sports, which I don't know the entity that well, they had a report earlier in the day that Alex Maruello has engaged with multiple prospective owners on sale talks. Mm. I don't know if that's accurate or not, but that was floating around in the Arizona, you know, ether. And then, so what, other, okay. So the, the, the sale is one potential option, right? Uh, the next part is, and I've I've mentioned this before, is I believe the league has been investigating their own options of what would we need to do or what would need to happen in order for us to take control back of this franchise and how much of a you know unwilling combatant is um is Alex Maruello going to be in this process? Right. I believe it's incredibly important from a league standpoint just financially, especially as a league that went through bankruptcies and funded this, you know, period of time that they wandered through the desert, that the league gets control back of the franchise before then ultimately, if 
they go down this path relocating to Salt Lake City so that the owners can collect the relocation fee and that that doesn't go into the pocket, obviously, of Alex Maruello. So they've withstood two decades of darkness in the desert. They want to reap the rewards of this, and they're trying to figure out, is it worth the fight? Will we win the fight? Mm. What is our collateral? Like, what is the blowback if we either win or lose? And how do we make things right in the Arizona market? So there's a million questions that the NHL is asking itself. And do not doubt for one second that regardless of whatever the Coyotes are posturing publicly, that all of this is happening behind the scenes at the same time, some or much of which is out of their control. I'm thinking so Sacramento, by the way. If you... Uh... <laughs> If you, uh, if no you one's had... ever thinking about Sacramento. Yeah, and that's a exactly. disgrace. If you, uh, if you had to put a percentage on the chances the Coyotes are in Salt Lake City for next season, what would you say? Um, less than fifty. Yeah, less. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> But greater than zero, and the fact that people are, you know, continuing to dunk on me left and right, I don't believe what you want to believe. I'm just telling you what is actually happening. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, can be interesting. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm with you. Like, how do you even let it get to late June? You've got a schedule and everything to do, and I just think you're so much better off in another market. So and I think let's that's spin been it, evident for years. Let's spin it forward. Okay, let's let's operate under the hypothetical that the Coyotes win the land auction on June 27th. There's no infrastructure at this site. There's no water. There's no sewer. There's no trap. Like, like all these millions of things that need to happen in order to even get building on this project. It's like five years away from playing a hockey well, game there. Well, so no. So we know now that if everything's perfect, like let's say there are zero hiccups in this, the very earliest that we will see puck drop in that arena is October 2027. Oh, can the league that's then that's so what I'm saying is let's say they win, but does the league have the faith that even if they win, that they can actually get this built and have it all happen privately funded? That part, yeah. I don't know that they're convinced on, and which is why no. they may need to pull up stakes beforehand yeah. before it even gets to that point. Because what if you waste another year after winning the auction? Then you're right back where you could have been right and why now. Would, why would you have any confidence that no. this ownership group could do that? Let me ask you this, just because uh, once upon a time, I covered the bankruptcies of the Senators and the Sabres, and, uh, as well as some CFL franchises. Mm -hmm. Uh, just got some, PTSD. Tom Golisano no, entered. Tom Golisano. Well, yeah, and then of course he replaced the Regiers, who went to yeah. jail, mm -hmm. um, and not the first NHL owners to go to jail either. They, they, there's there's, there's actually quite a history otherwise. of NHL owners going to jail. Yes. Um, yeah. uh, does the league have the capacity to revoke the franchise? Just take it away from? So there is a provision in the NHL constitution that revolves around involuntary termination and i believe that's what they've been studying mm. you know do we have the rights to do this would we win if challenged in court right all those like because you will be challenged in court oh, right? like that's a very just, big fight uh, you don't a strip lot of, a 900 million dollar yeah. asset from someone and, and think I, they I go think, away quietly. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My guess is that they probably have tried to engage in some talks to say, and I, th I'm not reporting this. I don't know this as fact, but just to go to them and say, what's your price? Like, what can we actually give you so that you just step Walk away? away. Nice go, guy. away. go away. Yeah. And then we sell the franchise to Ryan Smith in Salt Lake City for a pretty penny. We help uh, make up for some of the lost funds when we had to run the Coyotes. You go on your merry way. We're in a better market with a better owner. And, and, and a better fan base. Yep. And on the way out, you tell Arizona, hey, we love your market five years from now. Oh, yeah. We'll come back with an expansion team. Right. Exactly. We're going to do expansion. Save to, we got to hey, save face in Arizona. Hey, Frank, how about five years from now we expand to Atlanta and Phoenix? Huh? How does that sound? Sounds like uh, Redemption Day. <laughs> I think Boots Del Biagio's out of jail. Is he out of yeah. jail now? I okay. think he is. He's good, available. Good. He's, he's, he's done his time. Soon. I, I, don't, I didn't Boots, ever need to hear that name again. Boots, uh, <laughs> Boots, uh, Boots deserves the second. I think he got out in 2017. So we're, yeah. Yeah. 
Um, is Spanos out or is he back in? Because he came out and then he went back in. Yeah. If you're I not. think Spanos is back in the can. I think he went back in. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for this, Frank. Until uh, next week. See you guys. Have a good weekend. Mm -hmm. Hey, everybody. If you're enjoying what you're seeing here, then follow along with Secure Some Price on YouTube. I promise more content coming. They call it, the kids call it subscribe on YouTube. Well, how about liking it? Do that as well. Smash it right now.